Hey everyone, welcome to another YouTube Live. It's Wednesday and it must be noon because <laughs> I'm doing another YouTube Live. Today I'm going to talk about pouring with acrylic paint and how to get some very cool effects. And uh, we're going to do it in a way that is not going to add a lot of stuff to your paint. So I want you all to know that I had some really interesting and deep conversations with some of the folks back at Golden about the technical issues of pouring acrylic paint and uh, putting you know things into the paint to make it do stuff and what is a good idea and what isn't a good idea and so I have it on good authority that what I'm going to show you is probably the best way to pour the acrylic paint and get it to do some cool stuff without getting any weird side effects down the road okay all right so let's go right to the overhead camera I'm gonna remind you that I'm a one-man band here so um, if you have questions in the chat box just hang tight I will try to get over there in a few minutes and answer questions but you know I've only got two hands right so I see Jane and, or that's Millie I know that's you Millie and uh, Mary Oliver and Frida and I see Lisa I see some some people in there already so let's get rocking and rolling I want to show you about this pouring and some information that I brought back from the Golden Factory just for you guys so here we go let's take a look at the overhead camera I have a new camera, so bear with me for just a quick second while I uh, edit this shot so you can hear me really well. Let's just get that set up. Okay, good. All right, you should be fine there with being able to hear me. It looks like on my monitor that you can, you can um, see me and hear me okay, or you can see the painting rather. Uh, there's a couple second delay on this camera, but uh, I think it's going to give us better quality in the long run, so we're going to kind of have to hang with that. This little piece that you're looking at here is a pouring piece that I did a while back um, and it is on micaceous iron oxide. Let's show you that to the camera. Micaceous iron oxide and that is of course that's a golden product. Um, now once again I want to remind you all I show you golden products but you can use anything you want. I just use golden products because that's what I know best. That doesn't mean that you can't use other stuff, okay? All right, so um, this is micaceous iron oxide. That was the ground that I put down first on this little canvas. And let me just see if I can get my camera to quit doing autofocus. I am, I'm working with a new camera today, so bear with me for a quick sec here. I hope that's going to work. We'll make sure we get it there eventually. Um, okay, so this piece is on micaceous iron oxide and it's on a little panel that I built. And these are super simple to build. I'll show you the, the panel here. This is just a piece of plywood. Um, you can see on the edge there, it's just a piece of one inch plywood that you get from Home Depot or Lowe's or your local home improvement store and uh, it's a it's the kind that they make bookshelves from so they're all uniform sizes and so you can have the guys at the lumber yard just cut you these little squares super inexpensive I mean a whole bookshelf like this is probably two dollars and you can get an entire maybe four or five of these little panels out of that. It's pretty inexpensive stuff. And then on the back side, you will see I have glued down, I didn't even use any nails, I have glued down pieces of one by two. This is called one by two. That means it's one and three quarters wide by three quarters, uh, let's see, what am I trying to say? It's one and three quarters by three quarters, there. <laughs> And I just glued it down and clamped it. I glued it with wood glue and clamped it to the back side of this little panel. Now I have used this little panel for a bunch of stuff. It's probably at least 10 years old. It's got a bunch of different paintings underneath it. It is at least 10 years old and look how straight that guy is. 
no warping, nothing. Okay, it's not warped, it's super flat, super straight. So that's just a really easy way to make some really nice panels. And then you've got this really nice little element on the back that you can hang with or you could put a wire hanger or whatever. Okay, so that's the panel itself. That is then, um, I put a ground of micaceous iron oxide down on top of it. There's the micaceous again. And that gives me a nice dark ground to work on. Okay, so now let's look at the pouring stuff. I've got my plastic lid here and I don't have freezer paper in it today. Ordinarily I do have freezer paper but I just forgot to bring it with me. So I would I would usually put freezer paper down here and then um, when I pour that makes it easy for me to clean. I just wipe up the, you know, I just batch up the freezer paper and put it in the trash. I'm going to just wipe a little dust off of this. Um, but I forgot my freezer paper, so it's no big deal. You know, you can just wipe this down when you're finished. The main thing I want you to remember is that you don't need a lot of product. So I've got some little Dixie cups here. Now, these are, I think, the four ounce cups. I see a lot of pouring demonstrations on YouTube and they're using 8 ounce cups and 16 ounce cups and they're using a ton of material and you don't need to use that much material. You really, really don't. So I am going to show you how to do this a little more economically and get some pretty cool uh, stuff at the same time. The thing that we're going to be using as our medium is GAC 800. This is another golden product and it reduces crazing so you can pour puddles and you can um, get these wonderful surfaces without getting any cracks, okay? So you get some nice clear surfaces and they don't have cracks. Now this has a couple of bubbles in it but that's probably because I stirred up the paint too vigor vigorously. So when you're stirring up the paint, don't go crazy. You're not making a cake. <laughs> you don't want air bubbles in your paint. So I'm going to use three colors for this. Dialaride yellow. Can you even read that? It's got so many fingerprints. Dialaride yellow. Pyrol red. My well-loved Pyrol red bottle. My gosh, I keep refilling this from the big one and it's just going to be unreadable one of these days. Pyrol red. And everybody's favorite, teal. These are pretty cool colors to use together. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 800 and I'm going to make three little mixtures here. I'm going to pour about two-thirds of the way with 800. So that's about how much 800 I have in that four ounce cup. It might be a six ounce cup but I doubt it. Okay so I'm going to fill up these babies or not fill them up. I'm going to do them about three-fourths of the way, like so. Okay, now I'm going to take my colors and I'm going to put about, I'm going to call it 20% paint. You know, it's, uh, I'm guesstimating, but let me put it over here so you can kind of see The thing about these golden fluids is that they are so powerful that you don't need a ton of it. And of course my stir sticks are gone. So I'm going to use the back of my paintbrush. You don't need a ton of the paint because it's pretty powerful stuff. Now I've been seeing lots of pouring videos on YouTube and they're using really cheap paint so they have to use a ton of it. Also I'm using fluid paint. If I want to pour something I want to make sure it's fluid paint. Why on earth would I use heavy body paint and then have to mix it down to a thin consistency to pour? That makes no sense at all, right? So I'm just going to stir this. Now watch what happens. As I stir that, you're going to see some bubbles are going to form, but you're also going to see that I got a lot of saturated color. I don't have to use a ton of paint. So I want to make sure the camera can see that. I'm using a new camera, so I'm not exactly sure where the camera is. <laughs> there it is. I think it's right there. 
Um, so see how saturated that color is? Pretty saturated, okay? And I didn't use a ton of paint. So let's do that one more time. Well, actually two more times. And I'm going to clean my little stick here. So now I'm going to go with Pyro Red. Same thing. Pyro Red. Stir. Stir it up. And just keep stirring it until that color starts to saturate into the 800. It's going to look pink at first. Keep stirring. Keep stirring. And if it stays kind of pink, then you need to add a little bit more paint. But it should get right over to the saturated color. So this looks like it needs a little bit more paint because you don't want it to be pink. You want it to definitely be that pyro red color. So let me add about a teaspoon more. And we'll just stir. Keep stirring, keep stirring. I should play stir music. Dooby dooby doo, la 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 la. You guys will be glad when I stop that, right? <laughs> Okay, this is going to be saturated enough, I think. I'm going to keep stirring a little bit. I, I really want this saturated red. We definitely don't want pink. So let's go just a tiny bit more pyro red. See how I'm doing it in increments like that? Really do yourself a favor. You're going to save yourself money. And if you just take a little bit of extra time and you know do that stirring and get that color saturated then you're going to be much better off okay all right so there's my pyrol red clean my stir stick aka paintbrush get it nice and clean my last one is going to be teal and i'm going to put my teal paint in there and make sure my paintbrush is clean and stir, 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 stir. And you can see that start to saturate that 800. Just keep stirring. I think I was a little skimpy on that. There it goes. A little more. Now, one of the things when I'm stirring up this paint. If I were doing this in the studio, I'm going to saturate this a little bit more. It doesn't seem to have quite enough. If I, I am pouring in the studio, I'm going to make sure that I make these mixtures and set them aside for at least an hour to let the bubbles settle down so that I won't get bubbles in my paint. Now, I can't do that with while we're live, you know. Um, because I wanted to show you about mixing and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and pour with these even though there will probably be bubbles in the paint. Um, let's see, how are we doing here? This needs to be saturated a little bit more. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okie dokie. Now, we will just take our three colors and because we have the um, micaceous iron oxide down on the panel already, we're going to have this lovely dark background. Now I'm going to put gloves on because I'm working with computers and stuff. None of the paints that I'm using, <coughs> excuse me, none of the paints that I'm using are toxic. I'm just using gloves because I'm going to have to turn right around and go to the computer and stuff. So I don't want to have paint all over my, my Mac, you know? All right. So this is the little painting that I did and previously. And so I'm going to take my, I'm going to start with my Dialeride Yellow. And I'm going to, the thing I like about these, these, um, Pla uh, paper cups is that you can pinch it. So I'm going to start right here and I'm going to just pour like so. And let's have another one down here. 
Now I'm going to save some of that. I'm not going to use all of my yellow. Now I'm going to come back with my teal. And look how yummy that dialyride looks against that micaceous iron oxide. It's just super yummy. I love it. So now I'm going to take my teal and I'm going to pour my teal. And the nice thing about these pointed um, paper cups is that you can kind of dictate where the pour goes. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to pour right up next to that yellow and see how it just goes right into the yellow. I don't want it to blend. I'm just going to pour next to it. Let's have a little bit down here on the bottom. And a little bit we're going to pour another one right up here. I might have to remix teal. I might have to get some more teal. Okay. Now I'm going to take my pyrrole red. And you know what? I've got a lot of pyrrole red. So I'm going to put some in another cup. Just you don't want these cups too full. You'll lose control. <laughs> You'll lose control. <laughs> and it's all about the control, baby. All right. I am going to come up here and pour in the red. And I'm purposefully leaving some of that dark micaceous because it's really pretty and I've got too much red. I need a little bit, I need to pour a little more out. So now I'm going to take my paper cup, pinch it and just pour right into the teal and the yellow, just pour right across it. Let's do it again. Right there, see that nice thin line? Just go a little faster, you get a nice thin line there. How about, um, a little bit of a circle-y kind of thing. Let's go right here and maybe a little one here. Okay, now I'll come back to my yellow. Let's have a circle thing here. I'm pouring right into the teal. Now I'm going to pour right into the yellow with my red. Now I'm going to pour right into the teal, I mean right into the red with my teal. There. Now I can leave it like that or I can come back and make a bunch of drips and drops and move stuff around like I did with this one. This one right here I moved things. This one I'm leaving alone. So you can see you could do lots of cool stuff by moving things around. This edge right here on this one right here was done with alcohol. And let me show you how to do that because it's kind of a cool thing. I've got regular alcohol and I'm going to take a little bit on the back of my paintbrush and just dip the alcohol, dip the paint back of my paintbrush into the alcohol and I'm just going to touch, not touch, but drop it right here. So it'll start breaking up that red. You'll see things start to happen on the edge of the yellow and I'll get it up to the camera so you can see what that looks like. Now I have it on good authority because I've talked to the tech people at Golden that this is an okay process to do with your acrylics. Um, I know there are some other techniques being shown out there with silicone and stuff like that but it's not the best idea to put silicone into the acrylic paint. It's not compatible with the paint and wonky stuff can happen. So let me see if I can get this fancy new camera that I have. Let me see if I can get it to show you a close up. There. See what's happening with the red right there where I dropped in the alcohol? It's kind of pushing out and doing some kind of cool stuff. The yellow area right here is also doing that. So the alcohol breaks up the 
acrylic and then once it dries it completely evaporates from the acrylic so you don't have any weirdness left behind. It's not going to make a mess on your acrylic and ooze out later and do wonky stuff, okay? So there you go. That's a pretty simple, straightforward. I'm going to drop a little more alcohol here randomly. You can see it's pretty cool, a lot of fun stuff going on there. Okay. Just throwing around alcohol, basically. All right. So there you go. That's some fun stuff, right? And it's pretty simple, guys. It's not rocket science, and you're not going to come back to your painting in a couple days and have some weird element oozing out of it, like if, if you put that uh, silicone in there. It's going to do some funky stuff down the road, let me tell you. Okay, I'm going to go over to the chat box and answer some questions and uh, see what we've got there. So let me take a quick look at the chat box. Hey, everybody. So Millie. Millie says, that's not your favorite picture that, that I've ever done. <laughs> you mean the little yellow and red one? Yeah, you know, I do a ton of demo pieces. And uh, not all my demo pieces are great. So there you go. I totally get it. Um, but I'm glad that you like the alcohol. It works really well. So, Lisa, you can't, can you see me now, Lisa? Um, it, it, Lisa said she couldn't see anything. So I want to check in and make sure you guys can all see. Um, just give me a heads up on that. It looks like to me on my monitor that I can see. So uh, hopefully you guys can too. Let me just take a quick peek. Yeah, it looks like everything's happening there. So if you can't see for some reason, it's got to be at your end. Um, all right. So questions for me in terms of any of the products you just saw me use. I'm going to pull up the 800 again. Oh, Lisa, you can see great. This is the 800 from Golden. And it's specifically created so that you can pour and it won't crack. So that is a good thing. Um, other things to remember when you're pouring is that um, you, you're going to want to, like I said, you're going to want to mix those things up and then set them aside. And a really good way to do it is to mix them up in um, these little cups, cover it with plastic, set it aside for about an hour, and then come back and all the bubbles will go away because you really need to stir that stuff up, okay, to get it, to, you know, to look really good. Uh, Frida, really unexpected results from the alcohol, especially the very fine lines. I know, isn't it cool? I, I love that. And it will keep moving. It's moving again. Let's look, look at it again. I'll show you. It's moved some more. So take a look at this. Right up here at the top. Let me see if I can get you close to that with my new fancy camera. Yeah. See this? That it's working while I'm talking. So, you know, for the lazy artist, this is a good thing, right? <laughs> Let the alcohol do the work while I'm doing something else. But yeah, it keeps moving, you know. Now, one thing to remember, whoops, it looks like that went out of focus. Um, one thing to remember when you are working like this is that if you want to make sure you know what's going where, make sure you're working on a level surface. And it's even beneficial to get a carpenter's level and level your table, get everything level, all that kind of stuff beforehand. Because then you know that, you know, you can do this and put it aside and it's on a straight and level surface. And you're not going to come back after you go have lunch and come back and everything you did is rolled off onto the floor. I've had that happen. <laughs> so, and it's not a good thing. Um, okay, Lisa, oh, well, let's see, let's answer some of these questions. Uh, Millie wants to know, Jane1234, that's you, Millie, right? I'm confused, but I think that's, that's Millie. Um, okay, so how long for it to dry? Well, it depends on how warm the room is, how warm your studio is. Um, if you're working on canvas, it's going to dry faster than if you're working on panel 
because panel uh, does not have any airflow in the back so it's going to dry slower on panel but the thing about working on panel that I think is a better idea than working on canvas is that if you have this amount of material uh, paint and medium and whatnot on canvas you could actually get a sag on your canvas and then come back go have your lunch come back and you got a big puddle in the middle and it looks horrible so my advice when you're pouring is to work on panel and make sure it's level and then drying time oh boy there's so many factors to drying time so the surface you're working on panel or canvas um, whether the room is the studio the room is is warm warm is good warm is better um, if there's humidity in the air, like it's winter time here in San Francisco, we, it's been raining, things are going to take a lot longer to dry. I wouldn't expect this little piece that we just did, I wouldn't expect that to be dry for several days. And even then, it's going to be dry, but it's not going to be cured. So it'll be dry three, four, maybe five days, and then it's going to take probably another two weeks to month for it to cure. So when you're talking about an acrylic painting drying, you have the surface that it's on, you've got the paint, and the airflow of the, 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 the way the airflow comes out of the paint surface. So the top layer may feel like it's dry, but then anything underneath that may take several days, weeks, maybe a month to dry. So you want to make sure that the drying time, you allow for the drying time all the way through all of the layers. And especially when you're pouring like this, you can actually have, you know, layers of paint that do what I call the pudding skin. So they make a, they make a skin over the top and it, you think, shoot, let's dry. Okay. But it's this pudding skin and then it's dry, but everything underneath it is not dry. So you really need to take your time and be patient when you're pouring these big puddles of paint, okay? Um, Frida, would it be a good idea to put the leftover paint into a small container? Would it keep? You bet. Absolutely. Absolutely. If I take this little bit of Pyrrol Red and put it into a container, or even this container, um, typically what I do, I'm getting paint all over me, um, typically what I do in the studio is... I will double up these little guys like this. I double them up, wrap it really well, wrap it up in a in um what you call it plastic wrap, and then I put them in my refrigerator in the studio. Now, make doggone sure if you're putting anything in the refrigerator, make sure you label it paint, not edible, or make sure you put a big sticky note on it or something because you don't want someone coming along going wow look at that cool raspberry pudding you know make sure you label it and it will stay good in the fridge for a while and uh, don't leave it in there too long because uh, you know you could uh, you could get some issues around that but for sure a few days easy yeah no problem no problem okay um, I'm gonna put this one aside I need to do a little bit of uh, cleaning before I show you the next demo so you guys listen to some music give me about two minutes and I'll be right back okay I will be back with the next little demo that I want to show you okay okay I'm back I'm a little gooey um, so I want to show you a, a little bit more pouring and I want to show you about uh, contrasting colors with a dirty pour. So let's go to the overhead camera and I've got a little um, canvas here that I have put some micaceous iron oxide on and it is um, not completely opaque but it's gonna be it's gonna be dark enough for us to get a contrasting color. So once again I'm gonna come over here to my little cups and there's also a way when you do this that you can just tape tape the sides of the canvas. You can see here on this one's got a little bit of raised edge. I'm going to show that to the camera. See that raised edge right there? I taped this and then poured on it and it saves you having a lot of runoff 
and for some reason I can't put my hands on my tape right now. I was going to show you how to do that, but it's pretty straightforward. You simply tape all the way around and burnish it really well and then you can pour and it won't go off the sides. So there you go. So today I'm not going to be able to do that, but I am going to put it up on a little container here and I'm going to create a dirty pour and a dirty pour just means that you're mixing a couple of colors together that's all sounds fancy right so I'm gonna put my GAC 800 in here and I'm gonna start with dialeride yellow and I'm not gonna mix these I'm gonna start with dialeride yellow and I'm going to put the cobalt teal right into it and then I'm going to add a little pyrrole red for good measure <laughs> for flavor there we go okay now I'm going to just take this and pour it right on the surface let's go in the middle and you're going to see the colors come out differently there and apparently my dialeride yellow just went right to the bottom let's do that again I had no dialeride yellow in there for some reason okay there we go so wherever you see the white GAC 800 you're going to have it's going to dry clear now I am working at home in my home studio and the table isn't terribly level you can see things are trying to roll away so I'm going to give it a little help and have it roll this way there we go just going to keep that going like that now I'm going to come back with my teal and I'm just going to pour right here like so now I'm going to get my alcohol and this is where I should be able to get that area to break up like this right here so what you want is you want contrast between the colors for that to work so let's loosen this up just a little bit just a tiny bit there and you can see because I didn't mix these colors you can see I've got chunky bits here of, of red and yellow so it's going to act differently than it did um, in the one that I mixed so this is more like a dirty pour I'm putting lots of alcohol down into that teal and I'm trying to get that teal to break up so you can see the yellow underneath it's gonna start here in a minute there we go let's see if that does it so see how the the teal is starting to break up and the yellow underneath is starting to come through so let me just move this around a little bit I'm trying not to make a huge mess because I'm in the home studio I'm not in the big messy studio just tipping it a little bit okay now just gonna leave it like that and I'll come back I'll do a little bit more of that alcohol first I'm gonna pour a little red so you can get a little bit of that idea of the contrast because the contrast is really where this works the best so there's a little bit of that pyrrole red come back with a lot of alcohol just drop it right there and we can kind of get that red to break up on top of the teal 
See how it starts to break up here? I'm kind of hoping it'll break up a little bit and show the teal underneath. Let me keep going right here. Smells like a doctor's office in here. <laughs> I've got all this alcohol. But you know, that's okay. It's not going to hurt me. Um, it's just rubbing alcohol, so it's not going to hurt me. All right. So see, I'm um, trying to get that to break up just a little bit more. Let's tip it a little bit. You can get some really cool stuff. And I'm just not getting those broken areas like I did on this one right here. Of course, because I'm live, I can't get it to work. That's just because you guys are watching. Let's see. I'm going to keep putting alcohol on there until it happens. We may be here all day. A little bit. We're getting a little bit of it. It's not doing exactly what I want, but I think you get the idea. Okay. So very different look on this one than on the one that where I mixed the paint and poured it. So look at the difference. This one is the one that I mixed the paint and poured it. The dry one. I, I don't have the... Um, I don't have the wet one. I can't bring it back under the camera, but this is the one that's the dirty pour where you mix everything in one cup. Okay, kind of a different look. So I hope that's helpful. I'm going to go back to the camera now. I've got a big gooey mess on my table, so I want to make sure I don't uh, touch, the <laughs> touch the computer with uh, anything. My fingers are a big mess. Okay, all right, so there you go. That's a little bit about pouring, um, using alcohol, making a nice little uh, panel with some lumber. Pretty simple, that making a panel. Maybe I'll do a whole video on that one, uh, on how to make a panel. Really inexpensive, and I'm telling you, they're so durable. You could put wheels on that and drive it downtown, I swear. <laughs> It's so tough. Okay, um, Millie, you like that one better? Yay, good. I'm so glad. I was a little worried there. All right, um, any more questions for me about materials? Remember that I'm using the GAC 800. You can pour with other things for sure. I pour with polymer medium, tar gel. I, you know, I pour with a lot of different stuff, but when I want a nice flat uh, pour without a lot of cracks or anything. This is the stuff I use. GAC 800 from Golden. Any um, more questions for me? It's, I've got a little bit of sunshine, so I'm going to grab my puppy dog and go for a walk. Guys, I'm going to wrap it up and grab my baby puppy dog and run out and get some sunshine. It has been a blast to hang with you all. If you have any questions about pouring or anything else, shoot me an email grab me on Facebook, whatever the case may be, and then stay tuned to the newsletter and to Facebook posts and stuff like that because some special things are going to be coming up here pretty quick. You're going to have an opportunity to do some private stuff with me one-on-one. -on -one. That's going to be happening pretty soon, okay? It's a secret. I can't tell you yet. All right, you guys have a fabulous day. Mwah! Kisses and hugs. And what do I always say? Keep painting. Keep painting. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.